Hey, what's up, phone lovers? Welcome to the Mobile Roar podcast for the week of November 17th, 2016. I am Joe Fidoa. And I am Chris Chavez. That's it. Welcome back. Yeah, I know. It feels it weird. Feels I'm not like... used to even talking, really. It's, it's I know. strange. I haven't seen you in ages. I've been <laughs> so long. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple weeks off. Uh, just, just busyness, pretty much. Um, but we're back, and I don't think anything in the world has really changed since we last podcast. Nothing that yeah. I can think of, at least. Nothing too crazy. Nope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about phones, because a politics. lot of stuff has happened. A lot of stuff has happened um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I know Chris has had quite a few new devices coming across his desk. I've had a couple on my desk. Um, so I think we'll just start things off with actually not a phone, but something that works with the phone. Um, the daydream view. Oh. Talk a little bit about that thing, Chris. Um, so I got a daydream view. Uh, it was under embargo, so I couldn't really talk about it the last, I don't know, a couple of times we did it. But anyways, wrote the review on it. Um, it's the little VR headset that you get with uh, some people are getting for free with the Pixel, which is kind of neat that Google's kind of doing them like that. Uh, but it's $80 normally, and um, you just put your Pixel inside, and you get to enjoy the wonderful world of VR. And um, it makes me really sick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I don't know why or how, which is it's like really depressing to me because it's like, it's like a Sega Genesis coming out or something awesome that you're just, and, and you find out that you just can't, you can't use it like you don't have hands or something so i've been like all aboard the vr train like i'm so excited about it as just you know this whole new technology and trend and everything um but the daydream has me scared that maybe i'm not i'm not i'm not compatible with vr <laughs> um what what all vr headsets have you used like for comparison um, i've tried i haven't tried the vive i've tried uh the p the sony playstation one and the PlayStation one I was doing okay with. Um, there was only a specific game that didn't sit well with me, and I felt really sick, and that was um, Resident Evil. But I was looking into it, and I found out that there's all these different factors that go into whether or not you'll feel sick, and it has a lot to do with um, the how like how the glasses are tuned and like how w wide your field of view is. A lot of it is like the screen refresh rate, um, the frame rate, just in general, yeah. and uh, the Daydream does pretty well. I mean, it's 60 frames. Like, nothing's really too blurry when you look around. Um, but most VR headsets say it has to be, like, 75, a minimum of 75 frames per second. And I'm not sure if Daydream is hitting that. But um, it's all these weird little things. And then the fact that your, fo your phone is sitting so close to your eyes and you're looking through these, like, basically just magnification lenses... Um, so you see all these little, all the little pentile display things and like all the dots, my eyes, I see those. So it's weird. So you start focusing on that and not the picture. And as you're moving around and I'm just like, I don't know what's happening. I just, I get really sick and it's, it's awful. But my girlfriend used it. She was using it for like 30 minutes and she freaking loved it and said it was great and didn't feel sick at all. So yeah. Yeah. In my experience, um, I've used you know, started with cardboard. I've used the Vive. I've used the um, Oculus Rift. I have not used like uh, Gear VR, but um, it seems like the more high quality you're using, the less uh, like motion yes. sickness you'll yeah. feel. Um, so yeah, and then there's like all these other factors. Like I was looking into the Oculus and the 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 Vive, um, and some of those have different, like the way that their displays, anyways, like the resolution and stuff. There's all these differences that are supposed to help with all that stuff. And I thought the vibe was going to be great, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was about it that just kind of didn't sit well with me. But other than that, I thought it was really fun. I liked Daydream. I played um, some of the games they had on there. Uh, most of them are kind of like premium paid games that are like five bucks, which uh, some people don't think that. Um, there's a snowball's chance in hell that people are actually going to purchase them, but uh, I think the experience is pretty awesome because it comes with a little a little remote, and the remote is kind of like the cool thing about it because um, otherwise it's basically just Google Cardboard with like sweatpant material over it. 
Yeah, but the remote, Google Cardboard like sucks to navigate. Yeah, you can't. There's no like interaction. You look at things to select things or just whatever. But this is like a real legit. This is like a Wii remote or Wii remote. Um, and then it has a touchpad on the top, so you can swipe through like some of the menu things. Um, and basically, you hold it, and inside the game, it's like a laser pointer, inside a virtual laser pointer. So you can click things and select them. It's got a little clicky button right on top. Um, and it's it's pretty neat. It works really, really well. Uh, a lot of the games, of course, factor in the whole motion controller thing, just like the old school Wii games. So you know, you're playing tennis, or you're fiddling around with magic wands inside of the game or doing whatever, and it's um, it's neat. Or you can turn it sideways and race with it in like a racing game, uh, and it's really, really accurate. So that, I think, was kind of the best part about it. Um, and overall, like I like the whole Daydream and the platform and all the VR stuff. I just can't. I just can't use it <laughs> that much. Um, yeah, besides I'll the have fact, to try it with like uh, when another phone comes out that supports yes, Daydream. Yeah. So like right now, you use it on the Pixel, um, or the Pixel XL, preferably because the the little Pixel has a even lower resolution display and everything looks really really bad. But uh, um, the Pixel, like it gets thermonuclear when you're when you're doing VR stuff. It's like forget about it. And then sometimes it gets so hot that a little pop-up will show up and it says like uh, daydream is shutting down or, you know, whatever it needs to cool down and you're like, ah, oh, crap. And then the frame rate starts dropping and it's just like, it becomes a total lag fest mess. But, um, I mean, I have a little desktop USB fan. So once I crank that sucker on all the way, had it blowing directly into my face, <laughs> little, uh, bucket of ice. <laughs> to, like, keep everything cool. Dunk it. It was like if only it, the pixel was waterproof, man. You could just dunk the whole thing. <laughs> you could play with it underwater. Um, then it was fine. Like the the warnings went away and stuff, and it got hot. But like it just needs like constant like I don't know. They they should build a daydream headset that has little fans in it to like keep blowing out the heat. Or don't use like the warmest material that people wear on their bodies <laughs> to make the the headset. Green sweats, yeah. <laughs> But um, other than that, it's awesome. I think Daydream is really, really cool. Not sure if it's worth $80, though. I don't think a lot of yeah, people... Yeah, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Is it worth $80? Uh, 50 yes. I would definitely say that. Because really, you're paying for the controller. That's where all the technology is. The headset itself is just sweatpants and rubber. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for $50, I feel like it'll be really, really good. I guess that's, the $80 is just the early adopter price, you know, the premium they add. You want to be the first to get something. So, all right. Uh, so, moving on to a device that I have. Uh, I have. Well, actually, you know what? This would be kind of funny. You know what it is, but if you hold the phone like this, what? covering the logo on the bottom, is it? It literally could be like five or six different. <laughs> Any like, phone, like you know, nobody will be not able to even like no hyperbole. This phone <laughs> looks exactly like um like an HTC phone. There's been a bunch of Chinese phones that have come out this year that look exactly like this. Um, but this one is the Le Echo. I think that's how you say it, right? Le Echo. No, yeah, Le Echo. Le Echo. Okay. Le Pro Three. Le Pro. Le Echo. Le Pro Three. <laughs> Um, Pepe, Pepe Le Pew's phone of choice. This phone, uh, I don't even know what to th- say about it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the May 8 I had. Like This phone has amazing specs when you look at it. On paper? Snap, Snapdragon 821, you know, uh, over 4,000 milliamp hour battery. 5.5 inch display, all all that good stuff. It runs super fast, super snappy. But the software is just so I, it it really is like so I I mentioned in the last um podcast that I had an iPhone for the first time in a long time and like using an iPhone for the first time there's a pretty steep learning curve if you're coming from Android. And using this phone for the first time was almost the same experience. Like, yes. It is so drastically different from every Android phone. Like even comparing it to the May 8, which Huawei has weird software. I mean, this thing is like another level. It is so bizarre using this thing. <laughs> like 
for example, um, you know how on most phones, you have this phone too, right, Chris? Yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. I've been okay. So you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, 100%. So like you pull down the notification shade and it, it's just notifications. That's all it is. There's no quick toggles like you find on every Android phone. It's like, what the heck? I, I spent the longest time like trying to figure out. They put the quick toggles in the multitasking screen. So you hit the multitasking button to see the quick toggles and all the apps, which is just, it, it's really hard to get used to that. Really yeah. hard to get used to that. Um, their home screen, like this is the default launcher. There's no app drawer. Instead, there's this button that says live. And like, I'm even, I'm like afraid to even tap it because it just opens up this horrible <laughs> app. <laughs> it opens up it's this horrible live, app maybe. with like live video. And it's just like, why is this permanently on the home screen? I don't get it. Uh, yeah. It's such a it's such a mess. I feel like like a lot of st- like the UI choices they changed it just to change it. Like, because in China, I don't I don't know what they're doing over there, but I feel like that everyone wants to create their own UI and their own OS, and they're just like, let's just I don't know, let's just change it. Like, why? I don't just to make it different. We want to make it different from the other guys. So it's like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I can appreciate uh, like trying to use wasted space when multitasking if you're using little thumbnails it's like well there's no reason just to put a row you know you can push them down and you can fit all the toggles on top but it's just like but why change that from you know the notification area and it's just so bizarre the weird thing is to me the creepiest part is when you power the thing down um and it says i'm getting smarter every day <laughs> i haven't noticed that <laughs> power it down right now and just look at it and you'll see it it'll just It'll come right across the screen, and you're like, uh... Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay? Swipe down. Oh, yeah, I'm getting smarter every day. (laughs) Why does it say that? It makes no sense. (laughs) Oh, gosh. It's obvious that this is a Chinese phone, and there's a lot of weird things that, you know, some things just get lost in the translation. I'm sure in China that's, like, awesome. And people love that. They're like, oh, my phone's getting smarter every day. This is great. Uh, but here, our, it's a little creepy. Someone in our live um, comment says, flash cyan engine mod. Um, I did actually look on XCA. Just, I was curious. Um, like, I don't plan on flashing anything on here because it's a review device. But people are working on getting cyan engine mod on it. So Yeah, that's, that's kind of the situation with um, the Honor 5X. When the Honor 5X came out, and I was, like, hating it so much. Um, it had actually a pretty big uh, dev following or whatever. So there was lots of like cyanogen ROMs and, you know, some some people are saying that like once you flash cyanogen, it becomes a totally capable, 100% awesome phone. Um, but until you do so, it's just kind of... Plus, torture. I mean, the Honor 5X had like horrible software and pretty bad specs. So at least on this phone, you get really good awesome specs. Hard. Yeah. But uh, and then the price. So I don't think we'd mentioned the price. It's kind of the main selling point of the phone is the fact that it's three hundred, right? That's yeah, the ninety nine. That's the going rate. And Laco says that it's just sort of like a, before they said it was like a pre order type deal, and then they brought it back like the next day, and then now they're just like it's an introductory. Pr- like I mean, it's probably going to stay at three hundred, but uh, that's pretty crazy. Just on paper for what what you're getting. Um, yeah, even like I we, mentioned, I mean, Snapdragon 821 <clears> is not really that common on a lot of devices yet. So Yeah, just just the Pixel and then some new stuff that's coming out. But um, even then, like, I just felt like, there was, like, if I didn't know the specs, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that it was, like, top-notch. The camera is kind of ho-hum. Um, scrolling is, like, really, like, jittery, and there's lots of touch lag when you scroll around. Uh, the fingerprint sensor that. on the back is like, it's yeah, it's not slow. very good. <laughs> it doesn't always like register, and you're like, did it? Did it? Do also, it? it's it's like there's really n- it's not recessed that much, so sometimes it's like hard to tell where it is on the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're like trying to find it with your finger. Um, the 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 build quality. I mean, it's it's a metal phone, but like I don't know. I feel like it's a little too flashy for my taste. It's like it is, it's and it feels like. Drawer. The metal back feels like there's a protective plastic on it that I just can't find to peel <laughs> off. Like it really it's, doesn't they, feel yeah, metal. They, 
they polished it. They polished the aluminum. It's like the, uh, the I think the Honor 5X did that too. So there's basically, if you go to China, there's a Foxconn factory where they're churning out all these different phones, and you know they make these slight you know variations on design and stuff. But they all have that you know what is it the beveled edges, chamfers. They all have that yep, shiny, chamfered edges, shiny chamfer, and they're all you know they're all using these different aluminum materials. And I just feel like you know. Uh, these other companies come in and they're like, "Hey, uh, we'll pick that design, build that one for us, and that'll be our phone." And they're like, "Okay," they just churn out all these different phones. So it, it just nothing really special design-wise, um, performance-wise. I mean, I feel like it's a good deal for three hundred bucks. You're getting a pretty good phone, but um, in the end, I don't, I don't think that uh, what is it, Leica is going to be able to sustain this. Like, it's they're hoping that everyone's going to buy into whatever services are on the phone, which I don't even know because I haven't, I've been too scared to click the live button. I know. Like I don't want to open any of their, <laughs> I, I literally enough. tried to open, I opened uh, the video player the other day. I took a slow-mo video and I was trying to watch it. And so you have to open it in the video player. And like, it was the first time I'd open it and all these permissions start popping up to like, yeah, permission to make phone calls, permission to calendar. And I'm like, no, no, for this is every, the video player. Every app that you do that, I just opened up, I forget what it was, but yeah, like a video app or anything, and it was like, it wanted permission for your phone calls, your, da, 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 your SMS, like everything, and it was just like, it's kind of a weird thing for a, a video player, but I kind of figured that maybe it was because everything is tied into, like, because their launcher, I think, is supposed to do everything, so I'm guessing it's kind of like a launcher permission, so when you open the video player, it's like part of the launcher... I don't know, but it's just weird. And when you have these phones like this, it's just it's just odd. Yeah, um, I mean, there was the story about blue phones, um, yeah, BLU, yeah, who like what SMSs were being sent to China mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, it was the blue versions. It wasn't actually the blue ones that were sold in the U.S. It was like because basically blue does a similar thing. They there's no such thing as a blue manufactured phone. They go to you know China, they find these specific weird no no brand uh, Chinese smartphones, and then they bring them to the U.S., sell them, put their brand on it, and say this is our phone. Tweak the software around and stuff. So the ones sold in the U.S. were fine, but it was some of the ones that were being imported from China that people bought you know from like AppleMart.com or these other weird websites. Those ones were sending information or sms's to like china or something um which is which is basically just how those phone, it's a chinese phone so you would kind of expect it to do that um and again the u.s versions weren't really doing anything like that so um that's just kind of the, the turf I yeah guess. it's like every time i've posted something about the um this phone the laco Le, Le Pro three mm-hmm. uh, you always get those comments you know people are just like um kind of paranoid about using Chinese devices. Yeah. There's, you have like two, like people that are just like, Oh, the price, the hardware is amazing for the price. Like I would buy that in a heartbeat. And then you have the other people that are like, I don't know about these Chinese phones. Um, even though technically every, every phone's a Chinese phone. It's just usually you have, it's, it's a U.S. company that, you know, does the software and stuff. So, um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know where I feel. I do feel a little weirded out by some of the services and stuff on there. I just don't feel like it's American enough, and because of that, I'm not sure what they're doing with my, with my data. Because well, I will say this: I haven't put my SIM card in it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but because of that, I will say that the standby battery life is amazing. Like I think I've had this phone for like two weeks and i've charged it one time yeah no without the sim i popped my sim in and then i started using it a little bit and stuff and the battery life was in it was like on par with the pixel xl and that and the the le pro whatever three that thing's got a four thousand milliamp hour battery like so on hardware these numbers are going to sell so many people all these like android users that are just it's all they look for is the spec sheet it's going to sell so many with with those people but um it it's not it doesn't live up to those to that that spec sheet for some like it just it doesn't yeah it drives me nuts all right so moving on chris put them on put on oh, the next shoot. thing we're going to talk about hey. looking spiffy in his spectacles I wear my shades at night. 
Snapchat spectacles. Chris is one of a limited amount of people who has one of these right now. It's a very, very hard to very hard to one. find. Pod just podcasting YOLO. <laughs> there you go. That's fine. Just so he snap. just he just saved. So okay. Now run me through how these work exactly. That didn't just automatically go to your Snapchat story. You actually have to do that part on your phone, right? Yeah, so you, you click the video um, or the little button. It records a 10-second clip. You can push it up to three times, like rapidly, like one, two, three, um, to extend it by 10 seconds up to 30 seconds, so three times. Uh, and then it immediately, it actually won't even transfer until I unlock my phone, which is a little bit of annoying, um, hmm. an annoyance. So once I do, though, it'll start transferring over. It transfers over an SD, just a regular standard, horrible quality uh, video just so that if you're like really want to rush to post something, you can. Um, it just basically keeps everything in your memories. So not only does it transfer these videos versus standard definition and an HD version over Bluetooth, which is not the most efficient way to do it, um, it's uploading it from your phone to memories, which is Snapchat's cloud. So you're killing the battery. On <laughs> everything you're doing is killing battery. That's it's like these are battery... Like murders, um, and then from there you can you know go in your your memories and you can share it to your Snapchat story or whatever. So um, pretty pretty simple. Uh, the process can be kind of long between transfers, so sometimes you'll get like interruption or error because you forgot that it was transferring and you locked your phone and you went you know put it in your pocket or something. You like, can't oh, do shoot. anything with your phone locked. I don't know. I think it. It's it's so confusing. I thought maybe it was the app had to be open and then you could lock it. But I mean, I've tried it before and there's like it it interrupts it at some point, um, and it doesn't resume until you unlock it. So I'm almost a hundred percent positive. I'm not really sure how to really check it, but that it, your phone will have to be unlocked in order for it to transfer the video over. And it's kind of it's kind of annoying. Um, hmm. On the iPhone, it's a little bit different because the iPhone that you can connect via Wi-Fi to do like a Wi-Fi direct type deal. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, maybe the Android version does do that, but I don't think it does because um, the transfers take forever. And if you're using Wi-Fi, I'm not direct, surprised Snapchat made something that works bad on Android. <laughs> yeah, there's there's like a button on iPhone to like specifically get like the HD version. You click it and then it... But the iPhone one is so annoying because, like, iPhones don't do Wi-Fi direct very well. You would basically have to open your, your settings and look at the hotspot that the spectacles are making, and then you would have to, like, basically, like, you're connecting to them as, like, a separate router. It's iPhones are really annoying like that. But, um, yeah, so that's how, that's how they work. Um, video quality is okay. It's, like, 720p, which I guess is to be expected. They're circles. They're, they're fully circular videos. Um, it's pretty cool. Like I've watched a few of the ones that you've sent, and it, it's kind of neat. Yeah, I'm. I just have to because you're on your face and you're wearing them during the day and you're out doing stuff, and it's just like you got to remember. Like I should probably try to record something interesting because otherwise you're just like uh, sitting in traffic. Sucks. <laughs> like I mean, I feel like a lot of people are going to be uploading a lot of mundane stuff, whereas. Normally on Snapchat, you take it out and you're like, oh, something cool's happening. Let me get my phone and like record it. But um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's different. It's cool. They're, I mean, they're not even that expensive. They're 130 bucks. Uh, some people pay that much just for, you know, name brand sunglasses. I don't, I lose and break sunglasses very often. So I'm like really nervous about these things. Um, and the fact that they're so exclusive, they only sell them via the Snapchat vending machine, which pops up ran randomly around the U.S. Um, that the price Just of these the West days. Coast for now, really. Yeah, I showed up in Oklahoma. I don't know where is Oklahoma. Is that like a? It's still West, but yeah, closer to the middle. middle. I yeah. feel like there's there's a van, like <laughs> there's a vending machine in a van, and they're moving along. You know, they're yeah. going to Oklahoma. You're gonna see it hit the East Coast and start moving. Well, today it was back in California, wasn't it? Yeah. So my theory is there's two of them because there's, there's no two. way they could have gotten from Oklahoma back to California in that amount of time. It would have been extremely, extremely difficult. So. Well, they probably eventually do. You know, plan on like 
selling them at more than just one place yeah, one sure day at a time. A couple of like little vending machines pop up in like malls and stuff. Um, but like right now, it's genius. If they just put these vending machines up in malls and said, "Hey, people buy them," people would be like, "I don't know." But the fact that it's just totally like they, it's just genius. It's it's, marketing. it's manufactured hype. Yes. It's it's so crazy. And every time they pop up, they sell out within you know hours and just a few hours, and it's nuts. So the one that just popped up again in Santa Monica, which is like 20 minutes from my house, my girlfriend woke up this morning screaming, ran out the door. She got there, and the line was already like 300 deep. And it, it's just a vending machine, so they only hold about like 100 units. So she wasn't able to get them. She was all depressed and upset. Um, but yeah, on eBay, these suckers are going for... Eight hundred dollars a pop. There, I mean, it's it's great. Some have already hit like the thousands, like two thousand three hundred. Some bid. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Every time I tweet about it, like someone will hit me up in the DMs, like from like the Wall Street Journal, some journalist girl, and she's like, "Hey, can you pick me up a pair? Like, I'll make it worth your while." And just like, uh, no. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you already stood in line for like three hours once. Exactly. Like that was, that was pretty torturous. Um, and it's just, it's crazy. And there's people, you know, go, moving up and down the line. It was funny because there's guys that like, while you're buying it, there's people standing around you and like Andy Milanakis from MTV, um, kind of washed up now, but he was there <laughs> and he offered some girls like, Hey, use my credit card. You just buy two of them, you know, and I'll just give you the second pair or whatever. And then she was like, okay. And then all of us in line were like, oh, she just effed up because she could have bought two on her own and sold the extra pair for 800 bucks on eBay. Um, yeah, not, not smart. So these things are, people are flipping out about them. And they, yeah. they don't really do anything that, that crazy. I mean, it, is, it is very strange that it's essentially like Google Glass for one app. For one app. And, and it made me think. You like, can't take photos. <laughs> yeah, that is a very weird thing. You can't take photos. I don't get that. I like, and I I feel like that this was sort of a rushed project because I was listening when I was in line for the um the first time in Venice. There was a lot of employees that were in line as well, and they were like some of the guys like worked on like the programming for it, and you know some of them were engineers, and they were talking about how like yeah we don't even get them, we have to wait in line for them and stuff. And I was listening to them talk about the whole process and how it's so like. There's only like three guys working on this and it's like it's not as like high budget as you would think it's like he's like i'm just amazed that it even got out like on time ish is it well made like does it feel like it's gonna break on you or no yeah they feel i mean it feels like solid um like your standard plastic um the hinges are nice they don't they don't like I like it when they have that little rubber band thing where they like expand to your head. But other than that, I mean, they're good quality plastic. Yeah, they look fine. I mean, they don't, I I think you posted a picture when you got them, like how much of a douche do I look like with these? And I I mean, if it wasn't for the yellow circles, they would look like pretty normal sunglasses. Yeah. The design is kind of the more interesting aspect. Um, just the fact that, I mean, they're called spectacles and they're like very circular, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I think that might be in right now. Um, oh yeah. It is a very stylish uh, sunglasses shape right now. For I sure. prefer just like the regular Ray-Ban style. Um, and I was a little upset that they didn't have anything like that. Um, but again, this is just like super early. This is supposed to be like a pre-production thing that they're doing to kind of feel out, you know, get feedback and do all that stuff. So I'm sure they'll, and they can, uh, do software updates on them too so through the app so i'm sure maybe they'll add like pictures eventually or something so i was thinking about it how it only works with one app and i think it would be cool if instagram did the same thing because i haven't i, I don't use snapchat that much anymore i, I kind of prefer instagram now um yeah. i if if they came out with glasses that actually could take photos you know, not just video. They could one up them. Like this is so yeah. basic right now. They could easily one up them. Um, I think that would be cool. It's Insta goggles or something. <laughs> Insta, Insta glass. Um, it's going to be like the new thing is like uh, one off, like novelty hardware products yeah. that go with apps. 
That's, 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 that's literally pretty much what it is. And I mean, I really do think if anyone, and like nobody's biting on Snapchat harder than Instagram is right now. But so if anyone's going to do it, if anyone has the money to do it, it's the Facebook owned Instagram. So come out with Ray Van shape and Chris oh, Chavez oh! is standing in the lane again. Yeah. <laughs> just sell them online and I'm sure people will just buy them because they'd be like, man, I can't get stupid spectacles. Oh, these Insta goggles. Just buy these instead. That's yeah. it. That's all I got to do. That would be like game over. I mean, it'd be pretty funny. I mean, they sh- how shamelessly they ripped off stories if they like shamelessly yes. did like the vending machines and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big middle finger to Snapchat again. Uh, I, I can totally, it's so believable that it's just, it's, it's sad. Like I can totally see them doing that. All right. So those are our big things. Um, so we got a couple shorter little stories here. The one plus three T. What does the official. T stand for? I have to admit that I don't know anything about this phone. I Herp. just saw a headline, and that was it. Uh, yeah, they, they announced it. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, after rumors, basically, it's a one plus three with a new color. It's like a darker. They call it gunmetal, which is just a darker okay. gray. Um, and then it has a Snapdragon 821 processor instead of the Snapdragon 820, which you're like, that's kind of cool. Which like the 821 is kind of just like a a little bit faster clocked 820, but whatever. But there's other like little hardware details that are um, that the processor can do and stuff like um, what is it like an improved image signal processor for the uh, camera and stuff. So they they changed the camera as well. The camera's no longer I think it was eight megapixel on the one plus three, now it's 13. Or it was 13 before, now it's 16. It got a bump, resolution bump for the camera. Um, so does, I'm not sure on the exact sensor, but I'm sure it's been improved as well. It's a Sony IMX298. Oh, I think that was what they had before. Um, and a bigger battery, 3,400 milliamp, which is right up there with the Pixel. Uh, and that's it. That's kind of, those are like some nice little a midlife upgrade, which you don't really see from manufacturers. Uh, and it's kind of burning a lot of people <laughs> that just recently bought it. Um, because they are stopping the one plus three, right? Yes. At first people were defending them and saying, well, you know, if you want, and it's, it's more expensive now. So the three T is like 450. The one plus three was just 400. So yes, they upgraded the internals. Typically what you see from like Apple and stuff is like every year, you get upgraded specs, but the price stays the same because, you know, new technology and then the old technology is cheaper, so you don't, whatever. But OnePlus was just like, yeah, we're not even going to sell the regular one anymore. And people now are, are probably pretty pretty PO'd about it. But I don't know. I think the whole argument of, I just bought something and something better came out. Like, you know how, how often that happens with everything? Like, I just bought a uh, 2000... 16 honda civic and now the new one's coming out or like i i don't even know any i just bought a ps4 i just bought the ps4 now i just bought a ps4 pro literally i mean you can you can really use that argument for anything and it's just well it's especially annoying like your playstation thing it's especially annoying when it's the same company yeah like because there's new stuff coming out all the time for sure but when like the exact same phone you have with a letter added on to the end is released <laughs> that then it then it's kind of annoying yeah i mean like with with smartphones and there's no like no, who said that it has to be every year that you do a hardware bump i mean like the six month one is fine i'm totally cool with it uh, it doesn't really piss me off it's like minimally better than the regular one was and i mean if you weren't in the know on when these smartphones come out you you could have potentially bought the one plus three a month or two before the one plus four came out. I mean, you can always use that yeah. ridiculous, stupid argument. Like if you get your feelings hurt for that, it's like, get over it, man. New stuff We're kind of out. at a point too, where the differences between, you know, like even the yearly release cycles, you know, like the iPhone seven, yeah. a lot of people I saw were just like, who got the iPhone seven were like, this is, I didn't need to get this. Like it, it's <laughs> hardly different at all. Yeah, the and, biggest change for me was just the the jet black. It was a new color. <laughs> yeah. So don't don't feel like you have to upgrade every time a new phone comes out. Yeah, and it's not like yours is instantly trash. Like the one plus three now is just it's yours is broken. Yep. It won't work anymore. Like, come on, dude. 
but I did I do like the increase. So, so even for 450, it's getting up there to like premium pricing, which is like the exact opposite of what you know OnePlus was supposed to be about. Um, but it's still pretty well priced. 450 was good. That was like the Nexus 4 or something, or Nexus 5 might have been that much, or one of them was. Nexus 5X, I think, was that much. And it's, it's a way better hardware than those phones offered, but um, it is getting a little bit high now with the pricing. So people are like, well, what's the OnePlus 4 going to be? It's going to be like a $500 smartphone or <laughs> yeah, and that's just as much as what everyone else is offering. Just so. get a lack of man. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see somebody would literally is commenting that right now or thinking yeah. like get, a look, you know, get all the top notch hardware all right so a couple little apple things um to talk about there's a rumor that they're gonna come out with three uh iphones next year two of which will be the 5.5 inch variant so that would be two Oh my gosh. <laughs> there will be two plus size models. Don't really know why. There there like literally was no reason in the I thought there was something about one being like a super premium version or like a I don't know. Which I I mean I guess I could understand. Maybe if it was like coated in gold, twenty four karat yeah. gold. Um, well, what's the really premium I um Apple Watch? called oh the edition <laughs> yeah maybe it'll be like the iphone 7 plus or iphone uh 7s plus edition there you go iphone 7s plus edition um you heard it here first folks yeah there was i think there was something about the specs on one of them was like uh, it's gonna get oh they're gonna use like an oled display like at like kind of like samsung phones and stuff but it was only gonna be on the plus which is getting kind of scary not not scary but i, I mean I don't know, concerning for me because I like the small phones and I don't like that these big phones are getting all the cool, nice hardware. Um, so that that's a little disappointing, I guess. If you're if you're an Apple fan, yeah, you got to go big. go big or go home. The other part of it is that um, the phones are going to be made entirely of glass, which is like whatever. Been there, I done that. See what's going on with that. That's odd. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to do that unless they're trying to go with like wireless charging or something, which is possible. I think that was also a rumor. Remove all ports. <laughs> no ports at all. That, That's the only way. He's got to do... I would not be surprised yeah. at all. All right, and then the second little Apple thing is that they are re- reportedly working on uh, AR, augmented reality, glasses. Yeah, saw that. about that? Google Apple Glass or something. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I feel like they could do it. I guess it sort of depends. It depends on, it. is it supposed to be a toy? Or is it supposed to be, like, something, like, some type of new tech that's to augment your life? Like, Google Glass was a little bit different because it wasn't, there really wasn't any games for it. It really wasn't this whole entertainment thing. Um, it wasn't for, like, really watching. Wasn't, the, really wasn't even augmented reality no, either. Not at all. So um, now that AR is big and VR and all that stuff, I, I could see Apple coming in with something cool, but we'd have to see. I mean, I sort of feel like it would probably be just like a VR type headset or like Microsoft Hololens or something. So I don't yeah, think well, I don't think it's going to be like a cool thing you just wear around, like you know, like a cyborg and just <laughs> yeah, go about your day. It will be called Apple Glasses <clears throat> for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm sad. I get I miss Google Glass. Like people you know, talk crap about it all the time, but that's because people never really used it. And it was it was actually pretty awesome just to be walking around and like, bloop, bloop, get a little message, and you're like, oh, cool, let me video chat with them. Like, ah. You never ah, did that. You never ah. did that. And you could, I mean, like, you could see how the technology we have now is a lot better than it was, you know, three years ago or whatever. So, like, there's, there's things. Like, it, it had so much potential, I felt like, to keep growing and become awesome. But then people just got so so upset that they're being recorded in public and stuff. I don't know know what it was. I think smartwatches do a lot of what Google Glass did in a far better way. I mean, they don't do like video chatting for sure, but like I really don't think anyone cares about video chatting. (laughs) They they will. Like that is 100% on the roadmap is integrating little cameras into your watch and then being able to be like, hey, mom, and like video chatting with them through the, the watch and stuff. That's That'll happen eventually. 
It'll happen and no one will use it. <laughs> I I just don't think video chatting is ever going to be a thing that is widely done. It has been around for so long and no one cares. Nobody really wants to do it. Yeah. I mean, Skype is like has been around for like over 10 years. It's, just, it's, it's not a new technology at all. Just no one cares about it's video chat. It's never going to be a thing. <laughs> uh, all right. And then our last little thing is kind of a really cool exclusive thing that we had on Fandroid. Um, so Nick Gray got his hands on a Project Aura device, a working prototype with a camera module that you can take in and out. Um, that was the only module that he got, um, but really cool. He did like a hands-on video with it. Um, he did a video where he answered a bunch of questions about it. And so if you are interested in Project R and what it could have been, because it it is no more. A lot of people were like, well, I thought they scrapped the project. Yep, they did. <laughs> Where'd you buy that? <laughs> are they selling them in vending machines? Can I go buy one? Yeah, yeah. Um, I so, thought it was funny because there was a lot of comments of people like, whoa, like, what is this? Like, they didn't even know what Project R was and stuff. And I'm like, what? How do you guys not? Yeah, I guess if you don't know what Project R is, it was like Google's crazy uh, project of making phones with, um, it's like the G5, but to like actually cool where you could like swap off the camera, put on a different camera, swap off the like battery put a bigger battery swap off the processor like every component of the phone almost was like interchangeable um initially but it, it was just it too just, ambitious for yeah it was too ambitious it, it just never never worked out but if you want to see what the prototype looked like and the idea go check that out on fandroid very cool pretty awesome um all right let's do some wins and fails of the week um Actually, you know what? Before that, let's answer a couple questions um, from our live chat that we've got going on right now. Um, this is a question from Kobe, Kobe Rule Ali. I Sorry, I'm saying your name horrible. Um, he wants to know, Motorola Moto M, 5,000 milliamp hour battery and frugal Snapdragon 625. What happened to that? Instead, we get some MediaTek version. Wait, we do? The Moto Play? Moto... Which version? Moto M, he said. Oh, the Moto M. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that one. MediaTek um, seems to be the go-to in just low-end devices. I don't know why. Yeah, the low, like if you can throw, for whatever reason, if you can throw a MediaTek in there, I feel like these companies save a ton, a ton of money. Um I don't, I don't know why. I guess Qualcomm is expensive. <laughs> yeah. But it's, if you want a low end, it's always, yeah, it's just these stupid MediaTek processors. But, and I, I think that the MediaTek processors get a little bit more flack than, than deserve, though, because in the, in, back in the day, they were pretty awful. But they've been doing a pretty good job. Um, I've been played, I played around with a few devices that had MediaTek in them, and they were super quick at doing just about everything. So, I think now things have gotten a little, a lot better, but can't be yeah, sure. It's like, you. it's hard because, you know, you don't ever see a high end phone with a yeah. high end media tech processor. It's always like the cheap affordable devices. So the performance is meant to be bad because it's a cheap phone. So it's not media tech's fault. I mean, Maybe yeah, the sure performance they can make... is really good for what that process is trying to do. You don't really know. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting question from the same guy. If you could ever be CEO of one phone maker, which would it be? He says that he has a soft spot for HTC and a bit of Motorola. Um, and he said that he would like to do a Moto X remake. So um that's an interesting question. If you could like be CEO of one company, one phone maker, and like you had uh, all to say, what what would you do? Sony. I would do Sony. You would do Sony. What would you yeah. do to save Sony, Chris? Um, I would make their phones available out here. I would shrink the <laughs> bezels. I would make sure they had the fingerprint sensor, which I I don't think that's even in their power because of the whole like um, patents and all that stuff, but. Yeah, I would do maybe something with Sony. 
I like I love their phones. I like I always want to buy buy them and pull the plug on them, but it's just like it's always something like not having a fingerprint sensor scanner thing is pretty pretty dumb. Yeah, I honestly don't know what one I would do. Um, I mean, I like HTC, but I just don't know if there's like anything I could do to save HTC. Yeah, because they've already released like they like they put out good stuff. People just don't buy <laughs> that's it. The problem. So it's like, how do you? <laughs> How do you fix that, man? <laughs> like, if I'm if I'm using the HTC 10 right now, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and so like, what would I even change on this device? It'd just be like little stupid things that people don't even care that much about, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Good question. Um, all right. So wins and fails of the week. Um, I just mentioned HTC 10. So I went through a slew of different devices. Um, and I had like my HTC 10 was sent to HTC because I, you know, had water issues <laughs> and all that, <laughs> which I talked about. Finally got it back a little while ago. Um, finally finished up some reviews with devices that I had to use. So I'm I'm using the HTC 10 again. And I just have to say that is still my favorite phone of the year for sure. Um a little while ago, Chris, you shared something on Twitter. Like someone did a speed test with the Pixel where they were just like hitting the home button and then like immediately another app on the home screen and just like doing that back and forth, back and forth. And like the performance is insane. And so I was doing that on my HTC 10 and like the performance is almost the same, like maybe slightly slower, but it's like super impressive still too. Is the 10 and running NuGet? Do they have NuGet yet or is it still on no. Marshmallow? Um, Nougat is supposed to be coming out pretty soon. <clears throat> I think um, the multitasking is even faster on Nougat, so that might be yeah. where the pixels can manage. So. Right. Um, but really impressed with that. I mean, it's just it's such a good size. Um, I, I just I like it so much. And I got a skin for it this oh. week. So now it's like a really blue HCC 10. That is. How'd you? What the? It's slick wraps. It's just the blue one. Oh, that have, so. Really? Yeah, it looks almost identical to the really blue color, which is exactly what I was going for. So I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's really good. Yeah. Nice. So I really like this phone. I I just think if you uh, are looking for a phone still, you could probably get this one pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really good solid phone. And like I said, it's supposed to get nougat um in the next month. So you yeah, got that I, going I still have too. faith in HTC. Like there's, I don't know. To me, when you consider like what the Let Echoes or the LGs and stuff, I still kind of, I feel like you know HTC is still like the underdog, and you know they're kind of working for the user still, and they're still trying. You know, <laughs> they're like Tron. They work for the user. <laughs> they're trying you ever to see be Tron movies. The very best, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, my fail is gonna be. Um, <laughs> this stupid emoji thing with Apple and the peach emoji. <sighs> Emojis, yes. Apple went and like made the peach emoji super realistic, and they did this to a bunch of emojis. Actually, like the dog and a couple other ones that I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, the peach one got a lot of attention because people, of course, always use the peach emoji for butt because it has that. You know, the peach has like that crease on the one side, and so everyone always. <laughs> But and then they they went and made it super realistic and so it kind of lost that yeah. and people were up in arms about it and then apple credit to them they actually <laughs> sent out an update to change the peach emoji back to more butt like apple's emoji department they're on it i know really <laughs> Um, but the fail part of it to me is just I there was like an article about this. I don't remember where I read it, but someone wrote about how art um, emojis now are just they've kind of gotten out of control because too realistic, yeah. they're too realistic. And that was never what they were intended to be. You know, it's like it wasn't about the skin color of the face. It was about the emotion of the face. Like yeah, that's yeah, what the emoji yeah. is trying to portray. And so I think we talked about this a while ago. Like Google used to have those blobs. Yeah, that was and awesome. And those were great because they weren't human, you know? Like they didn't portray any 
um, skin color or any, it was just like, they worked for everyone. <laughs> and so you didn't need like five different smiley faces with five different skin colors. And yeah. it, it was just, it was more simple. I think that's what emoji were supposed to be. Yeah. I think we're headed, we're definitely headed the wrong direction with, with emojis. <laughs> way, yeah. way too detailed. Um, Make emoji great again. Yeah, we need to. Need some reform, some emoji reform. Uh, that's okay. What's Chris? Your win is really funny. So, uh, my win is going to be puffy paint. You know the the uh, old school project stuff. <laughs> yep. I have some right here. Actually, I have all the colors. Write so, your name on your folder for going to school, and, and you can like draw on your shirt. Like right on your hat, make America great again. Arts and crafts with Chris, Chris Chavez. Um, so what happened was the glass on the back of the pixel kind of sucks because it's it's glass. So it scratches easy. Every time you put it on a table, see if you're going to hear it, it makes this awful like sound. Um, so over time, I've been, every time. I've been pretty darn like careful with this one. I babied it. See, if I go to a restaurant, I put it on a table. It goes on like a napkin first, and then you know it, it rests that way. But even then, there's still these all these little fine scratches, and because the camera is right there too, you know these little scratches are going to start building up, and they're going to go over your camera lens and bad, super bad, bad, bad ombres. So what I did was I bought some puffy paint. I was trying to figure out how to fix this issue without buying a case, because cases on the Pixel are just pretty terrible. And I just love having it and seeing it and feeling it. What's and bad about cases for the Pixel? Um, I don't know. They're just I'm not I'm not a big fan. I tried putting the um, live case that they just released, um, and I picked this awesome, cool Galaxy. It's like the pillars of, of mm-hmm. heaven or something. But then my girlfriend said it looked like big pieces of poop floating in space, <laughs> and then it just kind of ruined it for me. And I'm like, well, that thanks for I'm done. <laughs> I'm freaking done now. Um, so I, I'm not using cases. I, I've decided. What about like a super thin clear case? They're, they're not. Every time it's – and then now I started searching ultra thin. It's like – but they they lie. All these – every time I've, I've ordered an ultra thin case, they come and they're thick or thicker than just the regular stupid cases. So it's just – I don't know who to trust anymore. I don't Are know they hard go. cases? Uh, yeah, there's hard shells and stuff. There's you got to those... get the thin silicone, like flex, like this one right here I have is like super thin. Yeah, there are some manufacturers and like sometimes I get them from eBay and I think it's just like these Chinese companies trying to save a couple pennies by like making them thinner, giving you less material. But I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. Thank I'm you. Like, oh, awesome. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. But it's, it's just hard to find. So I'm like, okay, I'm going caseless, but I need to protect the back glass. So what I did was I put puffy paint which comes in a variety of colors. I found a color that perfectly, a sponsor, matches, perfectly matches the blue. Got it from Walmart. And I just put two little dots, like a little bloop, on each little corner, bloop, on each side. And it worked absolutely perfect. It just made little pegs to kind of keep the glass raised uh, just enough so that the glass never touches any surface that you put it on. Um, and if you were to like press down on the front, it would like teeter just just a smidge, so you know that it's actually raised. Um, and it just worked so freaking well that um, I loved it. And yeah. I, I've actually been experimenting with using puffy, <laughs> getting a little crazy with it now. But um, I've been putting puffy paint on the sides. What did I do with my white one? Um, because the problem with aluminum is that it's extremely slick. It's really hard to get a good a good grip on. I feel like those as seen on TV guys. So what I did was I coated the sides with puffy paint too. I went a little bit, a little bit nutty with it. So oh put, gosh, that looks <laughs> bad. <laughs> just put a little bit on the sides. My friend is very disappointed in me. One of my friends is just like, what are you, you've lost your mind, Chris. Um, I just need to figure out a way. I was, to, uh, I was just about to say the back was a brilliant idea, and then you showed the sides, and I'm just it, like, uh. it's awful. But it makes it so like much more grippy when I hold it, and then like it's it's function over form. It looks pretty awful right now. I just have to figure out a way. I'm thinking of buying like some kind of like a silicone glue or spray, 
and then taping off the side, the front and the back, and then just spraying the sides with the silicone spray. So it'll be completely invisible, but it'll give it just enough grip and tackiness that you can hold it without a case and not. I think that's it. cool. I, I was going to say, um, like I said, I think the paint is a really cool idea, but um, I don't think people customize their devices enough. Like no. DIY, like um, this is a spigen case that I have and I, I sanded it. Whoa. And so like it's white underneath, but it's kind of cool. It's like a, I don't know, like a space, like uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of a cool look, but I was, was going to paint it. Originally black um it was gunmetal see the the gray parts is what it used to be okay it was gunmetal yeah um but i was gonna paint this um i was gonna go out and try to find paint that looked like was the really blue color and i was gonna paint this case and then i was gonna like tape off the top section and uh paint that with like some really glossy clear so it looked like a pixel there you go. But then I just got this skin, which looks cool too. <laughs> um, but I think it's cool. Like people should, you know, customize the stuff that they use, whether that is buying a skin or doing something yourself like Chris. Um, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Like sticker. Remember like when you go to, when you were in like fourth grade, you had a fold. No one just had a folder. You always put stickers all over yeah. it. And or like laptops. It. People put stickers all over their laptops, but yeah. you don't really see people like put stickers all over their phones. Or even their cases, which is kind of weird. We should we should find some cool little Android stickers to plaster all over our phone cases. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, you have a fail this week? I do have a fail. Um, and it has to do... <laughs> uh, Joe deleted my fail. Um, okay, so I have the Pokemon Go Plus, and I pretty much hate it. I don't know if I don't think I've ever talked about this before. Um, I hate the, the little last person in the world that cares about Pokemon Go is on this podcast. Strap is completely terrible. This is the one that it comes with. The Pokemon Go Pluses are still extremely hard to get, mind you. They they sell out whenever they come in. I think they've only had like two shipments. I think so they far. stopped making them. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they just sell out every time I try to go. They're like, it's just, it's like the spectacles all over again. It's just the hot, the season's hot thing. Um, but this strap sucks, and that's the strap that it comes with. So what I did was I found these cool little straps for. It's like a what do you call it? A wear wearable a fitness tracker. It's called the Misfit Shine. Um, ah. And these are just the replacement straps for that. But the Pokemon Go Plus just so happens to fit absolutely perfect inside. Um, which I'm not even wearing mine right now. I thought I had it near me. Uh, it fits absolutely perfect, and it's like the perfect replacement strap for the Pokemon Go Plus, which if you tried Google searching, you tried going on Amazon, you, will, you won't find any Pokemon Go replacement straps. They just don't, they don't make them, probably because not too many people even have a Go Plus. But uh, those are just awesome. They're like a TPU, so they, you, know, you don't get them absorbing your sweat. They don't get all stinky and smelly. Super comfortable, easy to remove. Easy to take off the Pokemon Go Plus if you don't want it, and they hold on to it securely enough that you don't have to worry about losing it. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So if you're thinking about getting a Go Plus, which I do recommend, especially with Gen Two Pokemon right around the corner, possibly, potentially, um, yeah, pick up those little Misfit Shine things. I wrote a post about it on Android, so we'll have it linked in the something or other. I actually have, I, I still play it too. So no, you're not the only one. <laughs> um all right so we got some app picks this week um mine is going to be android auto which is not new by any means but it works on phones now so you don't need a fancy head unit you don't have to go buy out a new car with android auto <laughs> you can just load it up on your phone put your phone on your little dash mount or whatever, and it does all the same things just on a slightly smaller screen. Um, just makes sense. It's <laughs> yes, absolutely makes sense. Like, it's ridiculous that this wasn't out to begin with. Like, I just want to know what the rationale, because there was somebody somewhere at Google who was like, we could just make it work like that, but we don't, we don't, like, what was the reason why they didn't? Like, no, we yeah. would not. I could just, doesn't make any sense and there were like some third-party apps that kind of did the same thing that you could use but yeah now we have the official one so that's nice it's great yep not much same to say lives. about that 
Um, my app pick is going to be Google Photo Scan. It's um, kind of it's kind of good and bad. So Google Photo Scan basically allows you to scan your photos, like physical photographs um, that you have laying around, and it does so in a way that it uses like Google's machine learning and all this weird stuff. Uh, you basically move your phone over the photo in different sections, and it compensates for like the glare that shows up in these glossy photos, because both of them are usually. That's what it's supposed to do, at least. Glossy, yeah. Um, that's what it's supposed to do, and it does pretty well. Like it does a good job of flattening it and then scanning it and getting rid of any little glare things that show up, um, because normally you would. I guess not normally, but the, uh, the alternative is using your camera on your phone just to take a, a picture. But then usually there's some light somewhere that's just like making a big old glare ball. So it does good at eliminating the glare ball and scanning it. But the quality is kind of so-so. Um, it's actually kind of awful. But I guess the, the point of it isn't really so much to 100% preserve these photos, but it's just a way of getting these photos online and then sharing them on social networks or uploading them to your Google Photos account. Um, but I mean, I still found that just taking a picture of a picture was a lot better quality with like my yeah. pixel camera. Like I tried it a couple times and every single time I tried it, it did not remove the glare. What? That's really weird. Yeah. I, I tried it in like a couple different rooms, a couple different lighting scenarios and it never got rid of the glare for me. Yeah. For me, like the, the main advantage um, for me was kind of just the way that it uh, flattened like it flattened the photos so it really was almost like you had just scanned it versus trying to get the right angle with your phone on a photo that it's always going to be like yeah off and annoying so um that was kind of the cool aspect so i mean it's it's pretty easy to use pretty like um user friendly i guess for the older folks um but definitely something to try out i feel like they'll probably improve it a little bit as time goes on but right now it's kind of so so um, all right, we got one email question, and this was from like two weeks ago because we haven't had a podcast in a while. Uh, so sorry it took us so long to get to this, um, but it's from Dan Lintz. Uh, he says, just found your podcast and loved it. So thank you. Um, he says, I got a V20 last week and love it. Thought I would share why it didn't seem like the gang saw the same value. So he's, I was kind of being harsh on it, and so he thought he would share why he likes it. Awesome. Um, unique, unique features not found together on any other phone. Always on the screen. Always on screen. Never have to tap my phone for time. Great for meetings if you don't know where to wear a watch. Sound is killer with phones or music systems. Use the one more earbuds and title for a relatively for a relatively taste. I'm not sure what he meant by that. A relatively taste. Uh, he says the Pixel is not even close. Only the Axon Seven comes close. Uh, SD card, more storage than a Pixel for two hundred fifty dollars less. Removable battery for travel, battery fatigue, handy back cover button to swap out. Killer camera with manual controls, wide angle lens, and raw files. Cheers, Dan. Thank you, Dan. So yeah, there. I mean, um, I, I have posted my review after that um, podcast and gave it a very favorable uh, score. It is a good phone. Everything that you mentioned is definitely a plus. Uh, I just think it's not really for me, um, but I can see why people like it. It's a good phone. Yeah, I recommend it to a lot of people, especially people that don't want to spend on a, a Pixel or, you know, whatever. I, I think my brother is buying the LG V20 soon too, so awesome, awesome phone. Cool. Uh, I think that's going to wrap things up for this week. I um, want to thank everyone who uh, was listening live with us and leaving comments and questions. Appreciate that. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, uh, or before that, if you want to send us an email like Dan did, um, you can use our address podcast at fandroid.com. You can also send us a tweet at mobile roarcast, and we will see those there as well. Um, but if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we're on Google Play Music, uh, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, and pretty much whatever podcast app you use. And you can follow us on Twitter. Chris is at GamerCore. Ashley, when she's here, she's at Overlord Roar. I am at Tall Schmo. And we may or may not see you guys next week. <laughs> it is Thanksgiving, so no. we're not we're not for sure. 
Um, but regardless, we will see you guys sometime soon. Later. <laughs>